So welcome everyone to this One World IMP Mathematical Physics Seminar. So in case you're new to our meeting today, uh, this is a regular seminar of the International Association of Mathematical Physics, and uh, you can find uh, more about uh, our series in the link that will be provided in the chat. Uh, and today it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Vieri Mastro Pietro, who's going to talk about anomalies and non perturbative QFT. Uh, this meeting will be recorded and you can watch or re watch it afterwards on our YouTube channel. Uh, but now uh, let me leave the floor to Vieri. Thank you. Okay, so uh, for right. the invitation, uh, can you hear me? Is it okay? Yep. Yeah. yeah, okay. So thanks a lot for the invitation. So I will. Uh, present some results on anomalies and uh, non perturbative quantum field theory. Please ask questions if you, if you if, even during the talk. So, so, my, my, so before presenting my result, I want to give you just a quick introduction on, on the problems because otherwise it is difficult to put the result in perspective. So let me say some very, uh, very quick and basic introduction on quantum field theory uh, and the main motivation of, of this kind of research. So let me start recalling that the standard model, which is this uh, very successful theory, um, which has this, for instance, the, the recent dramatic prediction was the X, uh, S, and so it, it's the best theory we have for elementary particles, uh, uh, has a purely perturbative definition, right? So it's, it, the, the physical observable are just expressed as series, which are typically diverging. So this means that uh, it cannot have uh, arbitrary precision. So it's, uh, and of course, it's a, it's, a, it's a basic and important problem to, to get a non-perturbative formulation for, for the standard model. A possibility is to use the lattice. Of course, the lattice breaks some of the observer symmetries. Uh, there is, uh, of course, we don't believe that the ultimate theory is a, is a lattice. So the point is that uh, consistency requires that the lattice step, which is a cutoff, must be much higher than the experiment's energy. So of course, you can use the lattice, the lattice is give you a, a provide a cutoff, but uh, so there are no divergences in a sense, but of course you need that, um, you have a constraint, the fact that you don't want to see lattice effects uh, because we don't see that, we, we, we know that in the experiments at the energy scale uh, in which we, we our experiments are done, there are no lattice effects. So this provides a constraint. So also a finite cutoff is uh, physically meaningful. There is no reason to believe that quantum field theory uh, a description holds for any energy. So one can say is an effective theory up to some energy and, 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 and that's it. Uh, of course, the mathematical control of functional integrals is more and more difficult, if possible at all. I mean, we don't know if it's possible to construct, to remove the cutoffs, but anyway, it's more and more difficult uh, increasing the cutoff. And there is a connection between what is called renormalizability of the theory and the size of the cutoff. So in particular, if you have a non renormalizable theory, for instance, the old theory of Fermi, which, this, which was describing the, uh, the weak interaction in terms of quartic fields, is non renormalizable. This means that this theory has meaning uh, with the cutoff of the order of the inverse of the coupling. So in, in the sense, this means of the inverse of the mass of the W. So this means something like at most 80 Jeff, uh, which is not bad, but uh, it is very optimistic anyway, modern experiments are much higher. So if you want really to have a theory, an effective theory, a lattice theory, you, you must have much higher uh, cutoffs. And so you need a renormalizable theory and, and a renormalizable theory is exactly what is provided by the, um, by the standard model and then by the, the, the gauge theory, which is a standard model. So in the standard model is a, you, let's, I will consider mostly, I mean, not speak about electroweak, but anyway, I will focus mostly on electroweak in which the coupling is small, a strong part is other problems. So in the electroweak theory is just renormalizable. So in principle, as it is renormalizable, by just uh, estimate, one can guess that you can have a, perturb a non-perturbative lattice definition up to, exponentially large at off uh, in the inverse coupling. So this exponentially large is related to the, so it's, not, it's unclear if we can, if we can, if we can get better than this. But anyway, 
this is uh, this exponentially larger in the inverse coupling is this um, scale of what is called Landau pole, which is enormous. Okay, so anyway, uh, there is no ob obstruction as you have a, this energy uh, scale would be very good for any possible experiment. Okay, so in, in a principle, in, in a sense, uh, the situation is good. We, we have we have a renormalizable theory. So why we don't put it on a lattice, which is uh, exponentially large okay so that that's, uh, would be a very uh, nice path to get the non-perturbative definition of, of of at least the later weak part of the standard model okay so we don't want to remove the cutoff there is a standard pole where we keep this this lattice which is very large and anyway it's so large that uh, is it, is good for any possible uh, experiment and, and then, but so what, what is the problem the problem is that uh, the renormalizability of the uh, standard model is quite uh, subtle because it is a, a chiral gauge theory. It's not simply gauge theory, but it's even a chiral one. This is the meaning of this L. Uh, in, in particular, everyone maybe knows, and I don't know the background of the people here, but anyway, anyway, anyway maybe everyone knows that uh, theory like phi 4, you can have a criterion of uh, renormalizability just by what is called power counting. You, you look to the, the divergence degree of, of integrals and then you have uh, a criterion for renormalizability. But this is not true for gauge theories. And in particular, it's, it's very subtle for chiral gauge theories. In particular, you need two properties, which is uh, the, the, the uh, main topic of this talk, you need two topics, you, you need two properties, which are the following ones. The first you need, I will say what I mean. The first is uh, the reduction of the degree of divergence with respect to power counting. So in a gauge theory, normalizability is not simply the superficial degree of divergence of the, of the perturbative expansion, it's smaller than that. And then the cancellation of chiral anomalies. So you need to, these properties, which are essentially cancellations. So you, and, 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 and and let me say just now that the mathematical problem is that these cancellations are usually obtained using spatial regularization, which are suitable in a non -per in a perturbative context. But if you want to use them in a non perturbative context, then uh, you break, as I said, some symmetries, and then these properties are, are not obvious at all. So let me say what I mean by these properties. So the first is uh, the first is this one. Uh, the, 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 the reduction of degree of divergence can be already seen in quantum electrodynamics. You can add, if you add the mass to the photon propagator, then the propagator becomes this, this one. Okay. So you have a piece, which is one over k squared, which is exactly the same as in the massless case. Then you have this piece here. This is the, so this piece is not the k for large k. So it seems, so the power, the, as everyone knows, quantum electrodynamics without mass is renormalizable. If you put the mass, it seems not renormalizable due to these terms, because you have, you have no decay. However, what is usually said in textbooks is that you use the conservation of current, k mu g mu is equal to zero, and then you can say this contribution. So what, what is written in textbook is that the transition between the massless and massive case in quantum electrodynamics is uh, soft. So you have still renormalizability. Of course, everything I'm saying in this part of the talk is formal. I'm just providing a, so 10 or 20 minutes introduction to this concept to, to say what which are the problem of mathematical physics. So this is just an introduction. But so this, this equation here is not well defined. A anything is well defined. So all the, all the problem of, of the talk is just to give it a, a, a well, well definite, good definition of this concept. Anyway, so this is the argument. So this conservation of currents says you that this part is appears. You cannot do that. A similar argument is done in the electroweak sector, but it's much more complicated because in the electroweak sector, the, so you see, you, so the conclusion here is that you, you don't have simply to look to this first point, reduction of the degree of divergence. The normalizability is not simply power counting because you, you should have this part, but this part disappears. So this is a cancellation. A similar, but much more complicated argument uh, is in the electroweak theory. In the electronic theory, you cannot use this argument. It's not soft because the mass of the electrons uh, breaks the chiral symmetry. So you need the X mechanism. And uh, so, so, so if you add the mass to the gauge theory, you have what is called the glacial model, which is not normalizable. So one needs the X mechanism. The mass must be generated without breaking the, 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 uh, the symmetry. 
and then, then you get the Weinberg model, and then you can prove order by order renormalizability. It was done by Toft in 71. But this is, is an argument similar, but more complicated. But I mean, the, the moral of all that is that, anyway, you have, it's not simply power counting. You need uh, this guy, you have to cancel the analog of this term. This is still not enough, unfortunately, because then there are also anomalies. So for the renormalizability of the standard model, you have also the problem of the anomalies. The current, the weak current are chiral. And then the chiral current are anomalous, they are not generally conserved. So if you have a cons non conservation means the current is not conserved. So it, 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 if you have a gauge theory in which the chiral currents are not conserved, the theory would be inconsistent. I mean, you, you, are, you want, you are considering a gauge theory just to have renormalizability, but then it's, it's, if, you are, if it is broken, then by anomalies, then it is not renormalizable anymore. But this is, looks unfortunate. Instead, it's very fortunate because it, you need that these anomalies cancel out. And this is what happens in the, this is what believed to happen with the charges provided by nature. So uh, as a moral, uh, let me just make a, a quick re resume of what I said. Then one can start from the Fermi theory, which is not renormalizable. Then one consider a gauge theory, which in the massless case is renormalizable. Then you add the mass. And then to preserve re renormalizability, you need both the X and you need the, the, the charge, in a sense, the charge quantization. You will see that. Um, the conservation of the anomalies, the, 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 the finishing of the anomalies, uh, it, it almost implies the charge uh, quantization. So this was the introduction. Uh, and then let me also say, uh, I hope uh, this is a very, very, very textbook, but quick introduction. Let me also recall what are these anomalies now. So again, let me write a, a formal function. So P in the Psi will be, so everything here is formal. A, P in the Psi is the, uh, is the formal Gaussian uh, Grassmann measure for massless Dirac fields. A is uh, an external field and B is an external field. So this is a sort of uh, electrodynamics in which we have uh, classical A fields. And, and then you want, then you can, you can expand in the A and then you get what is called the fermionic determinant. I mean, you will get something which is, can be represented as a series. So I, I defined this P in the Psi with this as the average, I call this with the I, the average respect to this, the meaning of this is just expand and they consider truncated expectation with respect to the P in the Psi. Then you see the, the current and the axial current is a series in A with this kind of coefficients. So formally, and this, these terms are given by graphs, which are called, uh, which are circular graphs. Then now uh, you, can, you can do a formal change of variables, okay? So you, you, you have a formal change of variables, you, you, you do this formal change, and then you get word identities, uh, which are these ones. Okay, you change this, you change the A, A becomes A plus uh, derivative of alpha, and B becomes B plus derivative of alpha, then you can have these identities, okay? So this for, it's very easy to get to do this computation. You simply make the change of variables, the P and the Psi produce attempts like the A, so you can absorb by the A. Okay, so if you make the derivative now, you get the derivative respect to mu is zero and the derivative respect to J5 is zero. Then you have conservation of current and of the axial current, okay? So this is exactly the conservation of current and axial current, uh, which would be true in the, um, uh, if you consider classic, if, if, if the action would be uh, classical, okay? So this would be the conservation of current of axial current. But all these kind of, uh, of, of steps are formal. So this is a case in which doing formal computation is wrong, okay? So in fact, it was discovered by Adler in uh, 69. Then the three-point function, okay, the three-point coefficient is exactly, is non-zero. is given by this formula, okay? P mu J5, JJ is non-zero. So as I said, if you do formal computation, you get that is, so this J mu is, the, is an expansion in this, of object like this. But then formally you get that all this P mu apply to any number of J is zero. But then if you address say, no, it's not zero, you get this formula. So this means that the, the chiral current, the J5 is not conserved. So a, a very suggestive way to write this is this one. 
So in massless quantum heterodynamics, the axial current is not conserved. Again, this is because this was uh, something related to the non, um, to the non well, the, the, the lack of definition of this atom. And in two dimensions, you have something similar, but you have only a, 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 the, the, the anomaly is in the quadratic and not the three point function. Okay, so this is the anomalies, right? So the anomaly is you do a formal computation, you, you, you get uh, the absence of, the, you have conservation of current. But then instead, uh, you have that the conservation of current is not, is not true for the five, for the J5. Okay, let me go now uh, to what is called the anomaly to, the, um, to this case in which now you consider uh, quantum fields, not simply external fields. So now you have, you, you add also a, a quantum, uh, you have also a quantum uh, variable, you have also a quantum A. Uh, so now you have, uh, what happens if you have a quantum, uh, a quantum A fields? So a quant now you have, instead of a single graph, you have a number of graphs. So you have all the possible radiative correction to the, um, to the uh, anomaly. But now what you get is this very basic properties of, of, of the anomalies, which is called the universality of non-renormalization of the anomalies. Okay, this was the result of Adler and Barbie. Now the anomaly has exactly the same value, one over two pi squared. Okay, so as I said, in the, in the model I, I've, I've shown you before, uh, this one, these graphs here is simply the average with respect to free fields. Now you can consider, quantum fields. So now you have, this becomes the three-point function for real quantum electrodynamics. You have infinitely many graphs. So in principle, you have something very complicated, but the result is, is universal. It's still one over two pi over three. All the relative correction is up there. And their argument is based on a cancellation between diagrams. Uh, you see essentially this identity, which uh, if you put a cutoff here is not true. If you do, if you do computation formally with one over k slash is uh, this identity is true and uh, and it is what what is uh, uh, at the basis of this okay so this the uh, so this was the resume so now they in the let we come back to the electroweak theory in the electroweak theory um, you have uh, now chiral currents okay so you will have something like B, 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 or the, the, this is B and W is the current associated to the B fields or the W fields, okay? Then you will have something like this, B, W, W, and then you, you will get something which is not conserved. So this is what means. This means that the, 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 the current as, as associated to the W field, to the B fields uh, can be non-conserved. So F1, F2 are polynomial in the charges. So uh, let me try to, um, I want to be sure that I, it is clear up to now. So the point, let me say again, uh, we have, a, we have a, a chiral theory. This chiral theory, it is a gauge theory formally, but then we quantize it, we consider the function it, and then we, when, when we consider the conservation of current, the current is not conserved, which is the, the first property we wanted when we, when we define this, this gauge theory. Right, so this this says that the theory is in a sense inconsistent. You have you have they don't have any more co the, 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 the uh, conservation of the current B, which is the, 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 the associated to the gauge field. Okay. So so the, a very deep property is this one, which is called the anomaly cancellation, which is which was discovered in seventy two uh, by. Uh, this author Richard Lopez and Meyer in seventy two. They cancel if the charges, this F1 and F2, so the current is conserved, uh, if the charges are as in the first, as in nature, so are quantized as power of one third. So this is the charge of the neutrino, this is the charge of the electron, this is the charge of the up and then down, okay? And then you have quarks with three colors. So with this, with nature ensures that F1 and F2 are zero, okay? So this is something really interesting. So you have consistency, uh, to have, to have a renormalizable theory almost implies almost the X and charge quantization. At the classical level, the charges can be what you want, but then if you want renormalizability, then uh, they must be uh, as in nature, okay? So all these arguments 
are done at the, at the, non, at the perturbative level. So the, the basic question is what happens at the non-perturbative one? Okay, why is so, it's difficult to pass to a non-perturbative uh, description? Because all these properties, so for instance, this equation here, you see, I'm using the, the, uh, the, for instance, the non-renormalization of the anomalies. So of course you don't have simply the, the lowest order graphs. I, uh, this object here is, is, is at all orders. You, you have contribution to all orders. Then you need this anomaly cancellation, but you need the anomaly non-renormalization. But the normalization, non-renormalization is true. If you ensue, it's based on cancel, very complicated cancellation, which are broken, for instance, by the numbers. Okay, so, so what we, so are we sure that renormalizability survive uh, at, the, at, at a non-perturbative level? So we need, on the other hand, we need that to get to exponentially high energies. Okay, so that that's, is the end of my introduction. I don't know if there are questions because maybe this good point. I mean, this was would, would be a very quick introduction to 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 quantum field theory. So the point is that so I started with, uh, uh, with say some words about this electroweak theory. Then I wanted to put in evidence this fact that uh, in order to have, in principle. The theory, is, the theory is order by order renormalizable, so one can hope to get exponentially high uh, cutoff. But then the renormalizability is not simply dimensional, it requires properties, and these properties can are proved at the perturbative level by cancellations, uh, which are not obvious to implement in a, in a non perturbative framework. Okay. So, this, uh, so the understanding that this other part in, uh, Theorem at the beginning is this uh, non renormalization of the anomalies and the, the reduction of the degree of divergences is uh, a prerequisite for uh, the possible construction of electroweak with the lattice exponentially large in the inverse couple. So I cannot construct that, but I want to investigate such properties in simple but related models uh, at the non perturbative level. Okay, so in particular, the model I will consider are three. Uh, the first one is a vector model in four dimension with a cutoff uh, with step uh, of the order of the inverse coupling. So it corresponds to the, uh, to the inverse of the W mass, for instance, so not, not, not so big, but for this kind of model, you can give a non-perturbative construction. Then we consider a similar model in D equal to two, which is called Sommerfield model, in which you can get any lattice. So also you can make the continuum limit. And then I will consider an effective electroweak again, uh, which you can see at least the partial of this anomaly cancellation. So in the first two models, the uh, AB property is exact. In the last one, uh, I want to see some partial anomaly cancellation and hopefully, uh, hopefully this kind of ingredient will be uh, useful to construct uh, some one day the electroweak theory uh, up to exponentially high cutoffs. Okay, so let me start now from this, uh, from this effective model. So the, from this lattice model. So I will consider now, the formulas look similar to the previous one, but now, now they are not, not uh, formal. Why? Because now I, I put myself on a lattice. So now everything is finite. I consider a, a finite lattice uh, with, uh, with periodic boundary condition of size uh, 2L. A is the lattice step, I am in, uh, and mu is uh, one, one, zero, two, three. A is a vector field, which is Gaussian, and then uh, everything in the end. D, this is the second uh, derivatives in uh, uh, discrete second derivatives. So this is the what is called the vector field or a massive uh, boss, a massive photon. Then P in the psi, as I said, is the, is a, a discrete version of uh, of the Dirac field. So the, so psi are Grassmann variables, and S uh, will be an object like this. So the last term is called Wilson term. It is very, very important. Uh, why? So and, and then here you, you will see uh, why it's so delicate to, to implement that ideas uh, uh, on the lattice. Of course, you can, you, essentially the, the, the Dirac propagator would be something like one over K. Uh, one would like to replace K with uh, the discrete analog of that, a sign, for instance, but the sign has two poles. So if you don't put this term, for instance, and you simply replace the Dirac, the Dirac action with the discrete Dirac action, then you will get, they will get sign, then you will get eight poles, okay? So, so if you don't put this term, uh, then you, 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 
in, in the, even in the formal continuum limit, you will, will, you will not get the right answer, okay? Because you will have several other ports. You need to add something to, to have only one port corresponding to zero, okay? Simply because you, 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 with this phenomenon is well known in quantum theory, it's called fermion doubling. You cannot simply discretize in this way. You have to eliminate these spurious ports. So that seems something uh, innocuous, but it's not, because this temps breaks is a sort of mass, okay? Breaks the chiral symmetry. So this means that, uh, so it's a sort of mass. So in a sense, whenever you have a lattice, you have a sort of mass. So this chiral symmetry that you had uh, formally in the, uh, in the massless case is uh, broken by this term. It's only an, so it's only an emergency. So this is something unavoidable. Uh, or you, there are other ways to, to regularize uh, fermions. Uh, this is the simplest one. So now, so, so, so I am explained what is this PDA, which is the fermionic uh, PDA, which is the bosonic for the vector field uh, uh, integration and this PDA side, everything is finite. Uh, so it is well, everything is well defined. So what is the interaction? The interaction is obtained by this S doing what is called the um, pyre substitution. Okay, so I replace uh, the the difference psi bar x, psi x with this exponential. Okay. And, this, and then I, uh, b here, so I am defined everything. I hope. So v electromagnetic is, I call it electromagnetic, but it's, it's a, this, this is not really the, the photon, it's a massive photon, it's a vector field. So this is, a, a, so d p in the a is the Gaussian integration, p in the psi is the integration for the, uh, Free fields for free uh, free fermion field. Vc is a counter term that I have to introduce just to if I want to if I want to describe a massless theory. B is a source term. If you want to consider the correlation, then you make derivative with respect to the external field J5 or phi. And J also is an external field. Okay, so I can define now the uh, the uh, Observable, for instance, the pi I call gamma, the three point function, the derivative respect to J, phi, phi. Gamma phi is the vertex function respect to the chiral current. Pi is the, is the three derivatives, the, the third derivative respect to J, and so on. Pi phi is the average of J5, JJ. S is the two point function. Okay, so everything is well defined. Please note that, so you see, why is, as you could say, why is asymmetric the chiral current and the current. Well, because the chiral current, you, can, you, you have a, an invariance. You can simply write it in this way. So the chiral current is, uh, you, you associate, you, the, instead of A, you write A plus J. Instead, you have, there is no conservation as we will see for the J5. So it must be defined by, by hand, but there is no natural conservation for this J5. Okay, this is just an effect of the lattice. Also note this J5, this zeta five, the zeta five is something necessary uh, because a priori due to the interaction effect, you will have not the same charge for the J and J five. So you have to tune uh, the charges so that uh, the, kirk, the charge current from J five and J are the same, okay? So this definition, uh, okay. So if there is no mass, so let's me say, just to be sure it's clear everything. If I don't put any mass here, Okay, then I would, I would have gauge invariance. Okay, so I can or change A, A plus A, and then Psi uh, multiply with the phase, and then I would, have, I would have gauge invariance. If I put the M, I breaks gauge invariance in the A, but I still have gauge invariance in the external fields. Okay, so in particular, I have this identity. So if J and J5 are the external fields, I can change the J, I don't change the A. I simply make a change of variables in the Psi without changing the A. So the car, I get word identities for the uh, external fields. But this is something important. You can, I mean, it's, uh, it's something obvious uh, from, from this definition, but it's important to stress uh, because it's a source of confusion. You can have word identities even if you, if you have a mass for the, for the, for the photon field, okay? In fact, you, you can have it is simply conservation of current. Of course, you, you, you don't have the conservation in the J5 in, in cost in contrast to the to the to the formal case. So so I, so I regularize the theory with a lattice so that the 
the, the, the current is, is uh, conserved by this, but not the J5. Okay, and then there is no way to, to implement in a way that both are conserved. So in particular, now you will make in derivatives from this uh, relation here, I can get this, uh, I can get this word identities. This is the three point function, okay? So these are the usual, uh, this is the three point function. So these are the, the usual relation for uh, uh, the, um, these are the usual relation for the, um, the usual word identities of electrodynamics, for instance. This is P mu is the discrete P. So it's something like a sine of P. So P times gamma, the three point function is the difference of the two point function. This is the, this is our, this, this relation here are the conservation of the current. Okay, so this is the derivative of mu one in, in momentum space. And this is the, the conservation of the current associated with the index mu and sigma. Okay. So the current is exactly preserved. As you see, so pi, pi my one, my two, my three is the derivative respect to J1, J, J mu one, J mu two, J mu three. Pi five is the derivative respect to J5, J mu two, J three. Okay, so this is a, a lattice model in which there is only, uh, so everything is well-defined, uh, is finite dimensional. I have introduced the J with this minimal subtraction, with, with this minimal substitution, the J5 by hands, these are simply, and then I have exact coordinates. Okay, so everything is well defined. Okay, so the constant G5, as I said, is fixed by the condition that the charge is the same. The charge carried, carried by the current and the pseudo current are the same, or the axial current are the same. Okay, so this is the main result. Uh, the main result is this one. Uh, this means that you see, if you choose the, the the A is smaller than M plus A, and you choose the ch this counter term so that the theory is massless, then the limit L going to infinity exists. And P mu P5 is equal to this, okay? So what, what this means this? First of all, you, need, you see, you need M times A of order one, otherwise this goes to zero. So uh, this means that we have, the cutoff is one over A, okay? So the cutoff is of the order of the mass of the photon or of the vector photon. This is exact. So, so we are in the range in which the theory is not normalizable. Okay. But, but it's, it has a meaning, provided that we, we can arrive to energies up to the order of one, of one over n. Also, you see, there is no, these are some living correction, but the main, the main terms is, uh, is uh, universal. There are no correction to the anomaly. The anomaly is exactly equal to the other result. So this is a, a non-perturbative version of this uh, other particle theory. Okay. With a finite lattice. Okay, so let me assume that originally this uh, other part in theory was proved. First one starts from classical fields, then it's a, it's a, single, uh, it's a, it's a single diagram. Then the other part in property says that if you have a number of symmetries, Lorentz uh, and so on, and, and you are in the continuum, then all the possible correction bunch is what is called the non-normalization. Of course, this argument of other part is perturbative. You, 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 it is true only order by order. There is no, uh, no it is not, not obvious at all that the series is, is the series is surely not convergent. And you need these extra symmetries. If you want to implement this kind of cancellation, which is necessary for the weak theory, you need something which, uh, which a cutoff, which is suitable for a non-perturbative analysis. So you need something for true with a finite cutoff. And then at, at the end, this is true. I mean, with a finite cutoff, you get exactly the uh, other parting uh, result, okay? With a finite lattice. So you don't need any exact symmetries. What you only need is gauge invariance. Okay? You, in fact, we can even prove, you, you can even break more. I mean, this result was first proved in, in, in a, in a, in a, in a non-relativistic context, context in which even, uh, even the, the, the lattice was anisotropic, uh, we break symmetries. Uh, even more than, than this case. For instance, we consider space and time. We, we even break Lorentz invariance in the strongest way, but still uh, it's true. Okay, so we only need, um, it's very general, you, you only need the gauge invariance. Okay. The, the, so this result was proved for current current interaction in, uh, in this paper with uh, Giuliani and Port, and then I extended to the case of vector bosons uh, later. So it's not perturbative with the finite time. So this is reassuring. Of course, there is this big uh, 
hypothesis. In, in principle, I think it would be removed, but then, as I said, as I will, uh, we will see, uh, uh, this cutoff, I, I, the technique, the method is to integrate the bosons using positivity and then use consider a fermionic theory, which is convergent by multi scale analysis. Then we uh, use so, uh, yes? excuse me. Uh, so, epsilon zero. Uh, so, the statement is that there exists a positive epsilon zero such that this holds yes. or. Yes, sorry, which is the question? Uh, what, is, what is epsilon zero? It's, it's a small cost. Yes, yeah, so, well, so I, want, I want to just to say that it's independent on, of, of M and A. Okay, and theta is something, like, something, something like one over one hundred something. And and theta uh, theta is is also a positive. Theta is uh, is one over four. Okay, okay. It, it's something subdominant. I mean, this this would depends on on the A, but it's is more than p square. So of course I, I, I wanted to, to show that this dependence on M and A, because you see when M go to zero, go to zero, and then when A go to zero, go to zero. Okay, so it's bad. I need to fix it. I could say M A equal to one, and then epsilon zero is a, I don't know, it's a, it's a and, uh, in this O of P, small P's are relevant. Yes, yes, for the anomaly is relevant the small P, yes. Okay. Thank you. The, the anomaly, yeah, in fact, this also was somewhat confusing. I mean, the, the anomaly is an infrared problem. Okay. Yes, so P is more, yes. Okay, so of course, one would like to have uh, A is much smaller than this, right? One would, would like to remove this condition. Uh, to do that, you, you need the multi scale analysis also for the, for the bosons, but I will comment on that. So how, how so the proof is completely different respect to the one of other Bardeen. It's completely different, and in, in a sense, is uh, very. Uh, I think it's quite natural. The point is that by by a multi-scale analysis, we, we, we can write this three-point function is this way. This formula is valid, is valid for p small. Uh, yes, you have. So what what means this? Uh, this means uh, so. So let's say, let, I want to define now uh, this formulas. So pi, uh, you remember, is the three-point function with the J5. Uh, okay, yeah, so I'm running out of time, so maybe I could go faster. So, uh, okay, so pi is the three-point function. This I would be the, the free non-interacting, uh, the non-interacting three-point function in the continuum with the momentum cutoff, okay? This Z are just uh, finite renormalization. And this H5 is a rest. The only difference, so of course, you can all, if, if I don't say anything about this H, H5, I can always write in this way. The only, the only, the crucial property of this H5 is this, this more regular than pi 5. Okay. So H5 is written here is differentiable. Okay. While instead, uh, Pi is non-differential. Okay. Pi is non-differential. It's continuous in P in around zero. So pi is a, conti is a continuous but non-differentiable fashion in P1 and P2 around zero, at zero. Uh, and instead, H5 is differentiable. And I, of course, is non-differential. So the anomaly, uh, in short, the anomaly is related to the differentiability or not of this kind of object. And, and if, if this i would be also, if this pi would be differentiable, you would not, not get any anomaly. So we put all the non-differentiable part here. And so which is so this would be the, the, the analogous properties of the analogous object in the non-interacting theory in, with the momentum cutoff. And then here you see something surprising that, but at which everyone knows if anyone has done some computation in, in quantum field theory, if the result typically depends on regularization. Okay, so if I put, this I is a, is a continuum with a moment by definition, momentum regularization. So the current is not conserved, right? So if I use this, it's not conserved. You remember that in the, in, on the lattice, this P1 nu, E nu would be zero because the current is not conserved. But that was because we use a lattice cutoff. If I consider this object is defined with a momentum cutoff by definition. So if you do the computation, it's not conserved. Okay, so this you do a computation, you get this. 
J5, J and J, J are non-trivial functions. They keep all the non-universal, and uh, they are non-universal. So this is the So now you use the word identities in the lattice, right? So you get the J, zeta J is equal to J zeta. So this is a consequence of the exact word identities on the lattice. So remember that, so in short, just to recall, this is a lattice quantity. This is the non-interacting case with the momentum regularization. Okay. So the lattice word identities implies this, this relation here. Also, the, the condition of J5 implies this. And then also this differential part is very important because it contributes to the anomaly. So, so what, where is used that is differentiable? We can now we can expand to first order. That is all the idea. This differentiable, we can expand to first order up to correction. And then as we know this relation, so this by five is a, gen, is a general formula. So we know that from the lattice word identities that this relation must be true. So by that, we, we can compute the first derivatives, which are very complicated, are infinite series. It's a, it's, a, it's a convergent series. It's impossible to compute explicitly, but it's fixed by this coordinate. And then by that, we insert in the other relation, and then we get exactly the correct result. All the dependence on the, on the, on the, uh, on the coupling disappears. Okay? So you see that the, the, the differentiability is crucial because we can expand. We cannot exp expand the pi, uh, sorry, uh, the, yes. We can expand the pi, but we can expand the, 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 the h, okay? So the argument is very easy. All, all the, so let's say if you, so it's a sort of very easy argument once you, need, you believe in this formula, but I would say this formula is very natural because the theory in the infrared is super anomalizable. So of course you can, super anomalizable means that it's close to the free theory. With, uh, with finite renormalization plus more regular terms. So, I mean, every, everyone believes in this formula. You can, in order to prove that is the real world, but it's something standard. Once you, once you have that, then it's simply word identities just allows you to close the equation. And so you see, this does not verify the other thing, apparently. This, uh, this, uh, there is a lot of Z here, which are couple independent. The momentum part does not depend, but when you put all together, then you get the universality. And the argument is com there are not complete, it's, it's just use differentiability and uh, gauge invariance. Okay. So now this was the first example I wanted to show. I mean, I'm already running off time, of course. I would say, I've seen, I think, 10 minutes. Or, uh, yes. Okay. So let, let, me do, let me say something about the other example. So the other two examples are so this example is four dimensional. Massive, uh, massive vector bosons up to a cutoff of the order of the inverse of the mass, okay, in four dimensions. So what happens in it? So this theory is, is non renormalizable in the infrared and super renormalizable, of course, in the, so non renormalized in the ultraviolet and super renormalizable in the infrared. Let me consider now a theory in which uh, this mar is this just renormalizable in the uh, infrared. So let me consider D plus one plus one, okay? In D plus one, one plus one, the ultraviolet properties are much better. We can go at energies uh, much higher than uh, the mass, okay? So the, the model is the same. It is a very famous model. It is, uh, it is called Sommerfield model. Uh, it was introduced even in the, when it was introduced uh, in the 60 something, 64 at least. Okay, so what is this? So I'm considering now a model in two dimensions, right? So before it was in four dimensions, now we are in two dimensions. So this is a lattice analog of the Sommerfield model. It's essentially quantum electrodynamics with a mass. Okay, I'm considering quantum electrodynamics with a mass. Okay, so uh, I have this. So the, this, this, the, the definition are the same, P in the Psi, P in the A. Uh, the V is the same as before. Uh, in the PCS, this is, is, is on the lattice. Uh, you have the uh, Wilson term. V is the just the, what was called electromagnetic. I mean, it was just obtained by this subst substitution. This, it's just this. Uh, you, you make this substitution here. Uh, okay. And then the external field. So it's the same, just in two dimensions. But now I'm considering a slightly different form for the. Uh, so 
quick. Yeah. So, so I'm considering the photon with the mass. So the problem is with psi is equal to one. So now I'm considering a bosons in which we have a real massive boson, which we have these two terms, this and this, with psi is equal to one. So you see, this is the problem we, are, we were discussing at the beginning. If you add a mass to a gauge theory, you, you get a terms which does not decay. If psi is equal to one, you don't have this piece. So this is pi square, pi square which compensate that. So you see, if you don't put this term, then the theory is super renormalizable. If you put, if instead put this term, dimensionally is just renormalizable. Just for use, for utility, I write just the scaling dimension. You see, for, in two dimension, you see this. So C is equal to zero is zeta equal to two in this form. So this is exactly the, the, the analog of, in, in four dimension, you, if you add the mass, you go from a renormalizable to a non-renormalizable theory. That would be very difficult. Let me consider a case in which you pass from a, a super renormalizable to a renormalizable theory adding the mass. Okay. So the point is that again, so this piece is, uh, would be here, but then if you consider invariant observable, it does not contribute. So now you, you can see what means this argument of uh, conservation of current. Because here again, we have world identities in the external fields. So again, we have exactly the same identities. You have lattice current conservation. So if you make the derivative respect to psi, the, the average respect to psi is independent. So this is a case in which we can test the first property of, uh, we want to discuss the decrease of uh, the degree of divergence, okay? Uh, I said that there are two main properties, the, the decrease of the, 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 the uh, this, this, this was the first one. Okay, so I, I hope it's clear. Okay, so now, which is the result? Uh, so of course you cannot do that for a chiral interaction, right? So this is a, is a, is a, is a non-chiral interaction. If you have a chiral interaction, then you will need some anomaly consultation. Okay, but in this case, you can decrease the, the degree of divergence. You can simply put size equal to zero, right? because the, the invariant of physical observer are dependent on the side. Okay, so this is the result. Okay, so this is the result again. So I cannot, uh, so surely I am something like uh, eight minutes. So I, don't, I, I will not enter in, into many details. So let's say again, you, you have, um, you get it. here you don't, you see, there is no, the A, so this epsilon zero is some a small number, but this uniform in L and A, there is no MA. So now in this case, you can, uh, M is fixed, but there is no condition on the A. Okay, so you can take the limit A go to zero. You can take the continuum limit. And there is no infinite wave function normalization. That's a crucial point. The theory is really super normalizable. So the, you don't need to make any rescaling of the fields. The correlation are given by convergent expansion. And you see, gamma five, which is the anomaly, is again, not renormalized. So this is a case in which you have a theory in which uh, is, a, is, a, is a, the analog of the previous theory, but in two dimension. In two dimension, you can really complete the program. You have anomaly non-renormalization and uh, you can take A going to zero. In particular, it holds for any A. Okay. So let me say that these results is really use the lattice. I mean, it, it is really crucial to have the lattice. There are exact solution for this model, right? They are very old, they are of the 64 by Hagen and Sommerfeld. In that is exact solution, you get zeta going to infinity. And the anomaly uh, is not universal. So why there is this discrepancy? Because the regularization in the, they are the regularization holds for continuum models and the regularization breaks some symmetries. Instead, I'm considering a lattice model, which is non-solvable, non but then uh, as, a, as a byproduct, I have that, uh, I have this phenomenon that happens in realistic theories. I mean, I have this phenomenon, I have the, the anomaly is not normalized and the wave function limitation is not. Okay, but this is just due because I'm just carefully choosing this lattice theory. If I'm, I'm, you will see in a moment, I'm not so much time, but if you make consider other regularization, for instance, a momentum regularization, you don't get it. So here I don't have too much time. Again, let me say two words, but I will skip because I think I have five minutes. Uh, so I don't want to, uh, to stay too much time. So again, you make- you have, Sorry, Thierry, you have uh, at least 10 because we-, we uh, Ah, finished 10, after, okay. uh, no, So you have at least 10 minutes, so don't, don't worry. At least, so up to what? 
Um, well, uh, up to up to our patients. <laughs> so, okay, okay. I, can, uh, I was just you can, you can go a bit joking, over time. I was joking. We, I mean, I wanted we to are happen. flexible. But okay. We are flexible, so don't worry. Don't, yeah. Very good, very good. So I can uh, I can uh, I cannot. Okay, so so maybe I can tell you some words on how this is proved. I think it's interesting. So you see, now we have a similar decomposition as before, right? So let, let me say. So you may, you remember what we have done before. I'm considering. So now the anomaly is the, the current current. It's not the three currents. Why? Because this is simply dimensional. In, in four dimension, the anomaly is related to the marginal integrals. So you need three, is the triangle graphs. Okay, so you have the three point function. Now you have the two point function. But again, we do the same kind of decomposition. However, now the, R is more regular. So of course, now you have to rescale everything. So now it, it is, the gamma five is non-continuous. Before was the anomaly was is related to a function which was continuous but not differentiable. Now it is related to, to a correlation which is simply non-continuous, okay, but finite. So now again we, we decompose in a way which this R is continuous, and this corresponds to a um, lattice uh, quantum field theory model. Sorry, uh, to a continuum quantum field theory model with the cutoff. Okay, so which is the difference? The difference is that in the previous case, the theory in the infrared was super normalizable. So that this part here would, would be simply the, um, uh, the non-interacting part. Instead, now the theory is renormalizable in the infrared. So he, this theory corresponds to a continuum theory, uh, which, is, uh, uh, a, which is interacting. Okay, so a sort of theory model. So it's, the problem now is more subtle, right? Because before it was simply diagrams. Now instead it's, it's a series of diagrams. It's just, you don't have, it's not, the, the continuum theories now is uh, serially interactive, okay? So this decomposition is possible only if this gamma tilde uh, is, it correspond to an interacting theory. Why before was corresponding to a non-interacting theory, okay? It's, so the interacting, sorry, I, uh, the interacting theory so is, 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 is very similar to the previous one. It's a sort of, of theory model, so current current interaction uh, with, a, with a momentum cutoff and with a density density interaction. Okay, so the idea, which is the basis of a number of papers we've done this, this year, is just to, go, to, to make a comparison of this theory with the theory which is, uh, which is interactive, but in which we have all this Z, which are, which, which are parameters, which are fine-tuned so that uh, the fixed points of the two theories are the same. So uh, anyway, even with 10 minutes, I cannot give all, all details. Let me just say that this theory is a continuum theory. So I, I make a comparison of the lattice theory with the continuum theory. So which is the advantage? Because I'm, I'm trying to, go to take the best from, from everything. The, the lattice theory, conserve breaks Lorentz invariance and breaks chiral symmetry, but conserve the currents. This theory has a phase symmetry which corresponds to chiral and global, preserve Lorentz, but, but does not conserve the current. So combining the, all this kind of information, I can close the equation. Okay. So at the idea, the, the point is that the two models deferred by relevant terms. One choose these parameters so that what are called running couple costs are the same. So let me just say that. Uh, so please tell me when five minutes are missing. So I want to just to tell that now you see these are again the world identity. So if you have a momentum cutoff, you see even the current breaks the world identities. Okay, breaks because the momentum disguise the momentum cutoff. The momentum cutoff produce additional terms in the world identities. Despite this fact. In the limit in which you remove the cutoff, uh, these extra terms uh, conserve uh, is a simple form. And at the end, you get some formulas which are very elegant. I would say these were even postulated by Johnson in 61 for the, six, for the, for the theory model. You see, if you have exactly um, conservation of current, this star would be one, and, and this would be zero. This one would be zero because it would be the conservation of the current. Instead, you get formulas like that. 
Okay, so this, you can compute exactly in the limit and the, the word identities, and they are different. But now the good point is that this tau is, is a simple form, it's linear in this lambda tilde. So now we have some information and you can close the equation. So for experts, I, I would like just to show this picture that I, I like very much, so which is the idea. So this, so this, let's try, let's see, let me see if I am able to make an idea. So this is the correction to the word identities with momentum cut off, not lattice, but momentum you have a correction. This correction uh, would, would produce terms like this. Okay, so now the point is that you can make the composition of this kind of contribution with these are the external fields and this is the J fields. Now you can make uh, use without breaking these determinants, you can you can make this the composition and then these terms you can compute and gives you the anomalies, which is linear. In this kind of graphs, you have this wiggy line, and then connection is ensured even if we, if you cut the wiggy line. Then you gain because instead of integrating over this line, you integrate over this line. And using the fact that this black part, uh, in a sense, is hanged to, to the scale n, then you gain a factor. And then at the end, only this piece remains. So this is very vague, but if people is interested, I can say something like that. So, okay, now I really I'm sure even if it was given to me more time, I <laughs> don't want to abuse too much. So here I'm just. But, but it remains on, on uh, recorded so people can, can check, right? So you have a lot of conditions. You have lattice word identities. You have these emerging word identities. You have all these kind of parameters. Then you put all together. So this is what is written in this slide. So it's very easy, it's just two lines. So you have a lot of parameters. You don't know J5, you don't know JT, you don't know J plus, you don't know anything. These are, are all non-universal. So it's a, it's a mess. You are in a very bad shape because you have all these Z, and is R all contributes to the anomaly. But then you have the lattice word identities, you have the emerging word identities, you have all this kind of information, you put all together and then the miracle happens. I mean, uh, you, when you put together, you, you get one over two pi, okay? So it's exactly universal. So even in a marginal case, you have a, you have a dex at other part the result. So the, the last things I want to say, I will be uh, very quick now, because I only want one slide, two slides maybe. So let's go again to the to the electroweak theory. So let us consider. So I will tell this very very quickly in five minutes, and I will stop. So it's, uh, so let us consider. Uh, so let we come back to four dimension. So the main goal would be to apply this this cancellation in, in four dimension with chiral interaction. So we have seen the other Bardeen theorem in four dimension and two dimension. We have seen in two dimension the reduction of the real divergence. The reduction of the intervention should be true in the electroweak theory. So let me say two words about the electroweak theory. In the electroweak theory, you have direct particles, you have four index, nu, a, u, d. These are the particles, neutrino, electron, uh, quark up, quark down. Then the quark up and the quark down has three colors, red, green, and blue. Uh, then you have also a chiral index here. Then you introduce the, I would say very quickly, this, the, the current associated to the B in which you have this hypercharge, and then you have this S index, which is the current index. And then you have the SU2 currents. Okay, now you, then this is also important. The, the charge is this Y plus tau. So I wanted to, before stopping, to show you this anomaly cancellation, which is very beautiful. So you can consider two regimes, a regime in which you have the bosons and a regime which is effective, which, uh, Okay. So if we said the renormalizability in the higher regime, in which we have the bosons, required the anomaly cancellation. But a, a prerequisite is that the anomaly cancellation also everywhere, also in the lower energy regimes. So let me say that, so I want to just to show you this cancellation because it's very beautiful. You remember the equation, the F1 and F2. I said, at the lowest order, the anomaly cancel out and the theory is really uh, consistent if this, Function f1, f2 cancel. Now I show you them. Are very intricate, and then they have this solution, and this solution corresponds to the to the real charges. Also, you see that if you if you choose one charges, then it's all is fixed. So they, the anomaly is cancelled almost. In, the anomaly cancellation almost implies the quantization of charge, which is a very nice. So there is no reason at the classical level why the charge could be not I don't know square root of two. Okay, but they must verify this algebraic relation. Okay, 
So let me say that in effect, I, I can define now an effective model through at low energies. So again, at cutoff smaller than the mass. So my question is, this is really the end. So the, my question is, okay, my goal would be, I want to construct the theory up to exponential for energies greater than the mass. That is too difficult. Let me do at least in four dimension. Let me do that at least at energies, at cutoffs smaller than the mass. If the, is, if the anomaly cancellation is not true, at that energies, I, I cannot believe that it will be true at higher energies. So I, I, I introduce this effective model like this, with, in which the W and the Z are just current current interaction and the magnetic field is this. And then here, the theorem is this, that the effective charge is not renormalized. This is a crucial point, because of course, you see, now you have several particles. So if you have different, um, if the normalization is different, uh, of course, then you, you will have, uh, right? Suppose that the, ch the, the, the electrons is different, the charge of the electron is different for any species, then the anomaly cancellation has no meaning. But the model I show you says this, that the charge is not normalized. Then if you consider now this GBBB or BWW, you can decompose as before in a differentiable and non differentiable part. And again, the differentiable part is not, is exactly as in the free case. Okay, so there are no lambda depends. There is no renormalization. And then F1 and F2 are exactly vanishing under the anomaly cancellation condition. So this is exactly the non renormalized anomaly cancellation condition. Of course, the result is weaker than the previous one because I, I cannot really close the equation. I have this RB, I can say is more regular. I cannot say it does not contribute. Okay, so the hope is that even if the, this means that it's faster decaying. Uh, in the X. So maybe when you try to implement this in the other regime, uh, this cancellation would be enough to get normalizability. Okay, you, you, if this is, is, is more, uh, anyway, it, it is more in the, is, uh, the case faster. So maybe it's enough to get, uh, to don't, don't, don't lose the normalizability. Okay, so I think uh, I, I, I have to stop here, but of course, if I have questions, I, I would be happy to discuss. So let me just say a very uh, quick uh, conclusions. So I've shown, so the anomaly cancellation and reduction of the real divergence are really crucial features in a perturbative framework. And then I've shown examples which, which they hold in realistic quantum field theory model. So for instance, uh, as I said, I consider two models in four dimension. There I need a mass, uh, the, the cutoff of the order of the mass of the bosons. And then in two dimensions, I, I can consider any theory. Any cutoff. Of course, in four dimension to go to exponential scale, even in non chiral vector models, should like could be, be possible, but it requires a multi scale decomposition also of the photons, which is not easy. In the case of chiral models, uh, and maybe even the, it's true in the, in the lower energy regime, I hope can be used to, to prove chiral gauge theories up to exponentially high regimes. A starting point that I would like to do is consider one something obvious. If you follow this thought, is the first idea you have, why you don't consider a one dimensional model with chiral interaction. So there is this model, it's called three for five models. And maybe then, then, so the goal would be to prove that this model. In this model, the current would be not conserved at, un, un, unless the anomalies cancel out. This three for five means are the charges. It's three, four square, four, four square, four square minus five square is zero. So it is, this three for five means the charges are three, four, five. So maybe, maybe this is something I can do. Okay, I don't know. I, I, I stop here and I hope uh, I get some insight of what I wanted to say. Okay, so maybe I can. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very nice talk. Um, okay, so are there questions? Please go ahead and unmute yourself if you have any. Yeah, I have one basic question, I think. Uh, I think on your slide 10 or 11, if you can just... Yes, maybe we can do for screen, okay. Yeah, you can share share again and we can... Yeah, go back. Yes. yeah. yeah but right. they were not... You, numbers, I think so. slide your 10, slide 10 or slide 11. It's... Yeah, but no, it, 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 they are not numbers. I mean, the question is... Uh... What was about? Can you I mean, it's any... just that there are no covariant derivatives here in... So, sorry, I've not heard. So, sorry, can you repeat? 
yeah so so you you have this vector bosonic field so there are no covariant derivatives no higher order so, so you want to see the model right so if i understand yeah so this this is the model right do you want to see this yes yes yes, yes, yes sure. okay so which is the question sorry yeah so i think on on your next slide so for, for, okay first for this slide so this yes, a this one, which yeah. is your bosonic yes. field yeah this, yeah, one? this is also fun right yeah so this so there are no covariant derivatives that's my question in in your of d size in in the psi or in the um, right so if so you go you mean, back so we don't mean by covariant of course i have the lattice so everything is discrete here L yeah, but, is but, but, right if if you go one slide back Yes. This right. Here. So a is a, a is a vector field here, right? Ah yes, you of course I could. Uh, yes, I maybe maybe may, maybe you yes maybe I, I said that uh, very quickly. Of course, yeah, I could put I could put even this. Yeah, right. You want to see this? This part, right? Yeah, but, but yeah, but yeah, that's, I put uh, that because uh, p is smaller. Than, yes, the answer is p is smaller than m, right? So I I simply so this is the same. I, I, I can put, I mean, because in that regime, P is smaller than one over A, right? And one over A is M. So this is an effect. An effect. I can put it, but that doesn't give any additional problem. It gives a good additional right, but, problem. Yeah, okay. It gives but, additional but my problem. confusion was the way the derivative, the A was defined. That was kind of confusing. Because if it's a vector, then it's like defined on the link between two. Yeah, yeah, sides, okay. I, 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 and I, then I, it is, yeah, OK. Yeah, but you know, I didn't, yeah, I, I, for brevity, I, I, didn't, I didn't discuss that because I wanted just to consider. Okay, uh, okay, sure. Maybe this is the question. I, 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 I don't know if this, it was the, was this the question or? No, my question was uh, that due to the A, your, this, your P of D psi would look different than what you have written here on slide 11. It's in, it's in the link. So you want yeah, to see this, 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 this link. This right? it's this action. Yeah, it's in the link, right? Because you have A mu. Yes. So you see okay, x, so, x plus e mu. Right. Okay. So you have it here probably in, in this definition. Yeah. Right. This is the link. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this okay. Link. So you this see. is the interaction. So when, you, when you expand this, you get a mu and they disappear. But a if you don't expand psi, it, then okay. of course this is if you change psi, you get the phase, right? The difference of this phase and right. this phase on the link, which is uh, hidden by this. Okay, so so these are the naive fermions in a sense because mu only interacts with the left-handed ones, or is it? No, no, this is not this. Is, this is, yes, also here I, I do the same. Right. Oh, okay. Whenever so I have I this, see, I, yeah. I put this. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Oh, thank but you. Yeah, I, this, this, I put this. the A also here. I, I'm not reading the formula. I want to put whenever I see something like this, I put this. Uh, just I want to preserve this word in it. So I put everywhere this G. Okay. I see. This is clear. So here, 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 but not here because it's local. Whenever I see a, a link, I put this. Uh, okay. So I preserve exactly okay. the G bias. Uh, that's fine. I think I understand what's okay. okay. Very good. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So it's written here view is better from S, replacing everywhere uh, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Any more questions, comments from other people? Uh, yes. So, uh -huh. can I ask a kind of, yeah, this is a kind of stupid question, but no, no, uh, do you uh, get. Uh, uh, do, maybe maybe get I can this? see you. Okay, okay. Yes. Hi. Uh -huh. do, you, do you get this? Uh, constant universal value of anomaly by simply computing it? Or do you see any like physical or mathematical mechanism which guarantees this universality? Well, of, of, of course, I mean, uh, usually people see this universality using another ways, complementary ways is used to, is, is using these topological arguments, right? So when people okay. use topology and says it's robust. Here, we are mm -hmm. not doing this way. We are just saying that but in a sense, it's physical because what we require is simply. Uh, so it seems that the gauge invariance is enough to get. Uh, mm -hmm. So what we, we really preserve is gauge invariance, and then and then only requiring this and defining the theory so that uh, the theory is uh, you reduce to the 
I mean, the only requirement uh, it seems, seems to be gauge invariance, which must be preserved exactly, and the requirement that in the continuum limit, you have the theory you want with this symmetry. So the current symmetry is, is broken, but is, reco is recovered in the limit, but then gauge invariance is preserved exactly. Only by this, uh, you get that. Of course, there are other ways to, to, to recover, to, to see this. Uh, so should, so it, should, it would be nice, for instance, there are other ways to, to, to see the anomalies, for, is, but for instance, by zero modes in the discrete and so on. There are other, other, other ways. Uh, probably they are complementary. I mean, we are not trying to see uh, any to sort of topological argument for that. I mean, just, so of, of course, at the end, we have to do some computation. We compute. So, but the computation are more or less the one I've shown you. I mean, the computation are the non-interacting case uh, with, the, with momentum and with lattice and bounds and the regularity properties of the series. So we, we don't have to compute. So all the point is that we, we are trying. So of course, there is no hope to compute all the series. Right? So, but this, this, this strategy I've explained to you says that once you know some very general gauge invariance and Regularity properties, which is not obvious, right? So the regularity that you make in a composition, you know that is uh, more regular than the nominal part, then that is enough. Okay, so you don't you don't have to make really. Of course, it would be impossible, right, to check cancellation. So all, all this, all the point is that we don't need to make cancellation order by order, infinite cancellation would be would be impossible. It's enough to know to to know that uh, the three point function is decomposed in a way in which you have something explicit something more regular and gauge invariance and that's it uh, so it's a, in a sense is of course this decomposition is technically not obvious but uh, i mean if you uh, it's very natural because it simply says if the theory is super normalizable then is the non-interacting part plus renormalization plus something more regular if it is renormalizable is the continuum limit plus uh, something more regular something like this uh, not, nothing more, but you need everything. You don't have to discard everything. You, uh, you need really exact analysis to, say, to keep everything. Otherwise you, for instance, if you consider, maybe I should say more clearly, if you consider a momentum cutoff, you don't get these properties because momentum cutoff breaks uh, the conservation of current. Okay, so really, really you need, uh, gauge invariance is really essential. So these links we were discussing before <laughs> must be there. Thank you. <clears throat> Any more questions? Uh, may I have a, a question? Uh, the textbooks say that uh, th there are uh, at least two kinds of anomalies. One is uh, related to, to global symmetries. And uh, so which is related to the decay of pions or things like that. And the other is uh, re related to uh, gauge invariance, uh, I mean, local gauge invariance. And uh, which, uh, uh, so we, uh, the, and you need the cancellation of the anomalies in the second uh, case. So do I understand correctly that your result is related to the second kind of anomalies? Uh, or, uh, no, yes, partially. So of course. Uh, I mean, no, the second, yes, the second would be the goal, right? So the, the, as I said, no, the, the other Bardin I, I was speaking is the first one, right? So, the, so let, me, let, let me say two words about this pie. Uh, so historically, of, uh, you know, uh, first motivation of the anomalies was this pi, pi decay, right? Decay, uh, because you, if, you, if you assume the, 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 the that there is no anomaly, the conservation of J5, the pi does not decay in constant with experiments. So this other but this is in this context and so on. So the hope is, so in the U, as I said, so I can rephrase what you are saying in this way. They are not really different, these anomalies. The point is that the gauge anomalies is the same anomaly, but, but, but you want to use it in, in, in a gauge context, right? So you want to use the anomalies uh, the cancellation of the anomaly to construct uh, uh, the theory at, at very high fields. Okay, so you want, when A is a, is a, is a boson. Okay, so a, let me try to explain better. So I'm, at the scales in which I am, really, I, I have not gauge invariance. Okay, because I, I'm considering a model in which I have a mass, so it's not gauge invariant. 
So for instance, the first model was a vector model. So I have a mass, so it's not a gauge. I have only gauge invariance in the external. Okay, so that is the, is, is the gauge uh, in, in the first way. Then I'm, I'm considering, in the last slides, I said, I want to use this anomaly cancellation to construct the theory up to exponentially high energies. Okay, so if I stay as in my torque up to energies, uh, which are of the order of the mass, I don't need the anomaly cancellation to construct the theory. Right? So I'm considering an effective theory at energy. So, the, so let me say, try to say in a simpler way. So the gauge, so you want to, in order to, to really to use the gauge invariance to construct the theory up to exponentially high cutoff. Okay, so from mass to exponentially high, which is the region I'm not done. But this, this property must be used there. So I'm checking these properties at lower energies. Okay, if it is not true there, I think is that there are very small probabilities, which is true at energy greater than the W or the Z. No, I don't know if this, uh, this clear. To construct the theory, so let me say again, sorry, uh, it's a bit technical question, but uh, you are perfectly right, right? So, you know, which is the story? The story is we have a gauge theory. The gauge theory breaks this symmetry. Then it, 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 it uh, creates the uh, W and Z masses, right? right? Once the Z and W masses are created, then at, low, at energies lower, then you, you could, in principle, you could integrate PA and, and obtaining a current current interaction, okay? So I'm just checking the anomaly cancellation in the theory which I'm not using the W fields, the gauge fields. So in a sense, it's still in the first way. I'm just, if you want, I'm just checking that the anomaly in the first way you are saying cancel. Of course, if I want to use it, in a gauge theory, it's much more complicated, but I think it's a prerequisite of hoping this, that at least in the lower energy regime cancer, okay? So this is the reason why I was saying it's very important that the charges does not change. If the charges has a flow, I'm not saying anything, right? So I, I want to just to check that the anomaly in the, so let's say, I'm, I'm, so just to conclude, in a sense of the answer of, uh, of your question is, surely we are considering the anomaly in the first sense. But they can consider the anomaly in the first sense also for the currents for gauge theory, okay, in the lower energy regime, and that there must must cancel. Otherwise, I, I have no hope to use them in the gauge context. And then I was checking that they almost cancel. So I think this gives some support to the idea that now you can implement this cancellation in the higher energy regimes and uh, and hopefully arrive to exponentially large. I don't know if it was a bit. I, mean, I think you understand, but it's a bit technical, right? So, so, yeah. so it, 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 just to say, they are not, I would say they are not different cancellations. They are, it's the use that is different. In one case, you have a theory which exists, like the pi on, on quantum electrodynamics, and you check the anomaly, right? So this is in, in the way I'm using. The other way is we need the anomaly just to, to construct the theory. So in fact, my, what I'm trying to do is, is, is a step in this direction. For instance, in one dimension, I think maybe it's doable. I don't, I don't know if you know a model which is done. For instance, this three, four, five model. I could consider a, 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 a B-dimensional model with chiral currents. That, in that case, I cannot really implement a lattice gauge, a lattice gauge theory, lattice chiral gauge theory. So I would need the translation. So that would be a step uh, in that. But at the moment, I'm just, Okay, so I hope, I hope it's clear. Just, just to conclude, this I would like to everyone understand. So, so the, these two anomalies are the same. In one case, you don't need the anomaly, it's a property of the theory, but you don't need the anomaly to, to construct the theory, like electrodynamics. In the case of gauge anomaly, you need this property to construct the theory. I'm, I'm doing something in between. I'm trying to, to consider a region which I don't need the anomaly, but I want, I want to prove that they cancel. So I can try up to consider the other regime. So that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This was, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Now I understand it better. Another question: This Sommerfeld model uh, was it the same Sommerfeld from from Bohr Sommerfeld? Uh, I mean, the... no, 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 no. There is an I. Some okay. are, yeah, no, no, it's someone, no, of course, you see, otherwise it would be very odd. No, no, it's, uh, it's 69, no, no, it's, uh, okay. uh, no, no, it's another one, but it's something related to this. It is a variation of the Turing model, right? You know the Turing model, the 
Kevin uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, well, what about the Schwinger model? Is it uh, the uh, Schwinger model? You don't have the end. Yes, is it is identical to the Schwinger, but you don't have to put the big end. Uh -huh, so 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 Schwinger model is with uh, with a zero mass. That, yes. Uh, yes. The Sommer field model is, is the Schwinger model with simply this. The Schwinger model is the, yes, the Sommer field model is a Schwinger model with the mass. I think this model were investigated in the 60s uh, just for this, because people wanted to see, even Schwinger worked a lot about that, right? We wanted to see what happens if you put the mass uh, in a gauge theory, right? There was a sort of struggling before uh, the X mechanism and so on. So it was considered in that context. If you can still have a gauge theory with the mass, that was the point. So you consider Schwinger, the mass is generated by the interaction. Uh, in, in, instead, in, in this case, you. So my point is that I want to put the mass in the Schwinger. And, so it, in the in, in the ultraviolet regime, the Schwinger is super normalizable, right? So it's not normalizable in the infrared and super normalizable in the ultraviolet. Okay, because it's uh, okay because it is the mass generation. If I put the mass, uh, I, I want to show that the, the model remains super normalizable, li li like quantum metronomics. Okay, so because I have this conservation of carbon. Uh, and, that, and then your, your first question was, you, you need, you, I mean, everyone need the same mechanism for chiral currents. So for getting this property, you need anomaly cancellation, something like this. Okay, um, any, any more questions? Jan, are you happy? Yes, I, yes, I am definitely more happy than before quite on the questions. Very good. <laughs> um, okay, uh, if there are no more questions, I think we can uh, close the uh, discussion. So thank you again for, for the talk. So we can stop the recording.